Do not think of knocking out another person's brains because he differs in opinion from you. It would be as rational to knock yourself on the head because you differ from yourself ten years ago. Horse man. Generations have passed and styles and cultures have changed, but there is still one thing that remains the same, the value of education. Education for many not only means becoming a successful lawyer or doctor, but it also means economic stability and hope for the future. For centuries, the way people teach and what they teach has caused tension between different cultures, ethnic groups, and societies. But when a man named Horseman came along, all of that tension was broken and the general standards for public schools was set. But the true question is, where did the idea of necessary school and education come from? And how did these beliefs lead up to what we know today as the generic public school? The idea of necessary education in America can date back to as early as the Puritans. The Puritans, a group of Protestants from the 17th century, believed that teaching their children to read was a vital part of their religion because it allowed them to be able to read and comprehend the Bible. In 1642, a law was passed in Massachusetts that required towns of 50 or more people to have public schools for boys, while girls received little to no education except for how to be a polite woman. In the 1700s, private schools opened in New England that were elite and only to prepare boys for Ivy League school, where they would receive the best of the best education. During these time periods, women and girls were thought to be lesser than men, in which girls were still only getting the training of becoming merely a housewife. Going into the Revolution, President Thomas Jefferson was a major influence on schools. President Jefferson believed that a good education was vital to having a good democracy, but very few of our Founding Fathers believed that the government should be involved in education. The duty to provide education was in the state's hands. With slaves not being allowed to receive an education, and most children having to find a job to help sustain their family's financial issues, a good education for most American children was still more than they could hope for. During the early 19th century, the Second Great Awakening started, and this was when reformers began believing that their children would become better citizens with a good education. From here is where the United States began its climb to achieving equal education for all with the help of a gentleman by the name of Horace Mann. Horace Mann, also known as the father of the common school and the father of American education, was born May 4, 1796 to farmers Thomas Mann and Rebecca Stanley Mann. Horace Mann grew up in a poverty-stricken family, and his parents could only afford to educate him eight to ten weeks out of the year by someone who was just barely out of school themselves. Horace Mann spent most of his childhood working to help his parents with their financial issues, and therefore his health was impaired because of the stressful laborious work. Despite these struggles, Horace Mann continued to persevere, and by the age of 20, he was accepted into Brown University. Brown University is where he began taking interest into politics, social reforms, and education. Horace Mann graduated in 1819 and chose law as a career. He read law briefly for a short time period with Brentham, Massachusetts, taught for one year at Brown University, and soon began studying law in Litchfield, Connecticut. After two years of studying law, Horace Mann passed into the Norfolk, Massachusetts bar. Afterwards, Mann moved to Worcester, Massachusetts and was in the House of Representatives because of his proficiency and expertise as a lawyer. While he was there, he also founded a state infirmary for those who were mentally ill. In 1833, Horace Mann moved to Boston, Massachusetts and be became president of the Massachusetts Senate. After he served, Mann then started a journal called the Common School Journal, which showed people that all children could receive a good equal education which could be paid for with taxes. With the supernumerary times Horace Mann served the state and the journal that he started, Horace Mann was unknowingly preparing himself to be on the Massachusetts Board of Education. 
1837, Horace Mann became secretary of the Massachusetts Board of Education, which was founded to help make schools a better learning environment and make sure students were being provided with the education they needed to succeed in life. The Massachusetts Board of Education is also where Horace Mann would argue that all children should receive free, equal education. Mann felt that in order to have a successful economy, you needed a group of educated workers. He also felt that a successful nation should meet these standards. The general public should be educated, an interested public should support and fund the education, children from various backgrounds should be educated together, education should be non-sectarian, education should be steeped in free society principles, and teachers should be trained professionals. He argued that education was the balance wheel of society and that when family social or economic status was not the same, the educational status would be. Horace Mann's theory of equal education for all can be broken down into eight theories. Value, knowledge, human nature, opportunity, society, transmission, learning, and consensus. Horace Mann knew that if we took into question all of these theories, then citizens in the United States could achieve an education for their children that would allow their children to be successful in years to come. For 11 years, Horace Mann worked to prove his point of equal education, and it was not easy. Many times he was told no, his ideas were not going to work or happen, but Horace Mann endeavored and achieved what we would know today as the generic standards for public schools. For many, Horace Mann is just another person that they learn about in history class, but for others he is the reason that the United States can say that it is as advanced as it is today. Horace Mann left something behind for every child and adult to be thankful for. Part of the reason that schools provide good education and children of different race, gender, and religion can go to school together is because of Horace Mann. Man made it possible for someone who can barely afford to pay their bills to send their child to school to get a good education. He is part of the reason that today a parent can ask their child how was school and not how much money did you make at work. Public schools today are in good condition and students have nice pens and pencils to write with rather than writing on a slate. Before Horseman died, he was going to make sure that in generations to students come, would not have to go through what he did when it comes to education. All children should be provided with a good education, no matter whether they are brown, yellow, tall, or thin. Keeping people from having a good education based on race, gender, or religion would not only be holding them back, but holding the United States as a nation back. Bringing together different cultures in the United States and providing a good, equal education for all of them allows for a more diverse country. Equal education also allows the United States to expand economically, socially, and technologically. It allows us as humans to see things from other people's perspectives and not just be glued to our one and only opinion. It was not an easy fight allowing everyone in the United States to receive a good equal education, and if students in school don't ever learn anything or take anything out of what they have learned, they should at least take this. If there ever was a cause, if there ever can be a cause, worthy to be upheld by all of toil or sacrifice that the human heart can endure, it is the cause of education. Horse man.